Good morning, and welcome to St. Peter and All Saints Episcopal Church in Kansas City. Deacon Donna and I and the whole congregation are happy to worship with you today. A bulletin for this service can be found via a link in the description section of the YouTube video that you might have just clicked on, or in an email from the church. Alleluia, Christ is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Glory to God in the highest and And also with you. Let us pray. O God, you have prepared for those who love you such good things as surpass our understanding. Pour into our hearts such love towards you, that we, loving you in all things and above all things, may obtain your promises, which exceed all that we can desire. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. Our first reading from today is from the Acts of the Apostles. During the night, Paul had a vision. There stood a man of Macedonia pleading with him, saying, Come over to Macedonia and help us. And when he had seen the vision, we immediately tried to cross over to Macedonia, being convinced that God had called us to proclaim the good news to them. We set sail from Troas and took a straight course to Samothrace, the following day to Neapolis, and from there to Philippi, which is a leading city of the district of Macedonia and a Roman colony. We remained in this city for some days. On the Sabbath day, we went outside the gate by the river where we supposed there was a place of prayer, and we sat down and spoke to the women who had gathered there. A certain woman named Lydia, a worshiper of God, was listening to us. She was from the city of Thyathera and the dealer of purple cloth. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. When she and her household were baptized, she urged us, saying, If you have judged me to be faithful to the Lord, come and stay at my home. And she prevailed upon us. The word of the Lord. Let us say together Psalm 67. May God be merciful to us and bless us. Show us the light of his countenance and come to us. Let your ways known upon earth, your saving health among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. Let the nations be glad and sing for joy, for you judge the peoples with equity and guide all the nations upon earth. 
Let the peoples praise you, O God. Let all the peoples praise you. The earth has brought forth her increase. May God, our own God, give us his blessing. May God give us his blessing, and may all the ends of the earth stand in awe of him. Our second reading is from the Revelation to John. In the spirit, the angel carried me away to a great high mountain and showed me the holy city of Jerusalem coming down out of heaven from God. I saw no temple in the city, for its temple is the Lord God, the Almighty, and the Lamb. And the city has no need of sun or moon to shine on it, for the glory of God is its light, and its lamp is the Lamb. The nations will walk by its light, and the kings of the earth will bring their glory into it. Its gates will never be shut by day, and there will be no night there. People will bring it into the glory and the honor of the nations. But nothing unclean will enter it, nor anyone who practices abomination or falsehood, but only those who are written in the Lamb's book of life. Then the angel showed me the river of the water of life, bright as crystal, flowing from the throne of God and of the Lamb through the middle of the street of the city. On either side of the river is the tree of life with its 12 kinds of fruit, producing its fruit each month. And the leaves of the tree are for the healing of the nations. Nothing accursed will be found there anymore, but the throne of God and of the Lamb will be in it and his servants will worship him. They will see his face and his name will be on their foreheads. There will be no more night. They need no light of lamp or sun, for the Lord God will be their light, and they will reign forever and ever. The word of the Lord. Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, Lord Christ. Jesus said to Judas, not Iscariot, Those who love me will keep my word, and my Father will love them, and we will come to them and make our home with them. Whoever does not love me does not keep my words, and the word that you hear is not mine, but is from the Father who sent me. I have said these things to you while I am still with you, but the Advocate, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name, will teach you everything and remind you of all that I have said to you. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give to you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not let them be afraid. You heard me say to you, I am going away and I am coming to you. If you loved me, you would rejoice that I am going to the Father, because the Father is greater than I. And now I have told you this before it occurs, so that when it does occur, you may believe. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. What a scandal it was, and it just got worse. 
Yet it seemed like such a simple thing. Paul and his companions sat down with some women. A scandal? Yes. Paul was male and Jewish, and his social norms dictated that it was quite improper for him to sit down with some women whom he didn't know. And one of these women was quite unusual. Lydia was an independent businesswoman, a dealer in purple cloth. Only wealthy people wore purple cloth. It was as if she was a dealer in mink coats. The story becomes more unusual. She and her household were baptized. No husband? Was she the head of the household? Apparently so. The scandal went over the top when she invited Paul and his companions to stay at her home. The story ends with the words, and she prevailed upon us. Why would Paul behave in such an unusual, even scandalous way? Possibly he no longer felt restrained by all of his social norms. He had recently traveled from Jerusalem where the apostles and elders of the early church decided that circumcision would not be required of Gentile believers. And that was a big change. Clearly Paul was open to being in relationship and ministry with people who might have seemed unusual to him. And he was willing to enter into unusual situations to tell them about Jesus and the way. Paul was open to God's action and God calling him into new ministry with new people. This whole story depicts God leading and calling. Both Paul and Lydia responded. The story began with Paul's dream about a man of Macedonia calling to him. So he was convinced that God had called him to proclaim the good news to the men of Macedonia. He got up and set sail and eventually sat down with some of with the women near Philippi. Lydia too had a calling from God as we are told. The Lord opened her heart to listen eagerly to what was said by Paul. She responded to the call when she and her household were baptized and her home became a base for Paul's mission in that area. What I find most interesting about this story are the bookends because they don't match. With the first bookend Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia, an expected recipient of Paul's mission. With the second, Paul actually baptized this woman and her household, unexpected recipients. There is one line beyond that last bookend, and she prevailed upon us. The apostle was humble to allow her to prevail upon him, humble to go under her roof, humble to accept her, her hospitality, and humble to become a partner with her, in Christ's mission. Our capital campaign will improve this, our mission base, both for inviting people in for worship and ministry and for sending them out. Those people will be us, as well as many more whom we have not yet met. There will be Lydia's among them, just as there are Paul's among us. Ultimately, this whole capital campaign is about hospitality, which is about opening opening this building, our worship center and base of mission, opening our hearts, the homes of our souls, and letting the new ones prevail upon us with their love and hospitality, even if it seems quite unusual. Amen. <laughs>
Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the, the Father, Father, the, the Almighty, Almighty, maker of, of heaven and earth, earth of, of all that is seen and unseen. unseen. We, we believe in one, one Lord, Lord Jesus Christ, Christ the, the only Son, Son of God, God eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, God begotten not, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and, and his, his kingdom, kingdom will have no end. We, we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son. With the Father and the Son, he is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Father, we pray for your holy Catholic Church. That we all may be one. Grant that every member of the Church may truly and humbly serve you. That your name may be glorified by all people. We pray for all bishops, priests, and deacons. For Michael, our presiding bishop, Diane, our bishop, and our clergy, Father Jonathan and Deacon Donna, our vestry, our day school, our parish staff, and especially St. George's Episcopal Church in Camdenton that they may be faithful ministers of your word and sacraments. We pray for all who govern and hold authority in the nations of the world, especially Joe, our president, our elected representatives, and the courts. That there may be justice and peace on the earth. Give us grace to do your will in all that we undertake. That our works may find <coughs> favor in your sight. Have compassion on those who suffer from any grief or trouble, especially the people of Ukraine, John Dunn, Ann Ralston, Greg Taylor, Margaret and Richard Ullman, and also Catherine Allberg, the Reverend Barbara Bean, Dodie Brown, Rowan Cartmill, Craig Cartwright, Kathleen Clark, Scott Curry, Ed Dwyer, Alan and Christy Aiken and family, Alex and Susan Green, Dorothy Gregory, Jennifer Brown Harnick, Betty Lockhart Hayes, Phyllis Hook, Jan and Randy, Jim, Ed and Blair Joyner Jr., Charles and Karen Joyner, Michael and Martha Kelly, Glenn and Ruby Lane, Jeannie McDowell, Kathy Morris, Deacon Bob Murphy, Bob Knoll, Gary Oda, Rosemary Overby, Pam, Lawrence Presley, Tom Carley and Theo Roberton, John Thompson, Carolyn Watson, Don and Donna White, Bill Winslow, and all those who in this transitory life are in trouble, sorrow, need, sickness, or any other adversity. That they may be delivered from their distress. Give to the departed eternal rest. Let light perpetual shine upon them. We praise you for your saints who have entered into joy. May we also come to share in your heavenly kingdom. Let us pray for our own needs and those of others. For those serving in the military and their families, especially Loyal Otterson, Alex Battle, Tanner Bosch, Matthew Carmichael, Gage Dietz, Brendan Frederick, Tom Gildea, Ryan Kelly, Trey Mavers, Robert Mangold, Luciana Laraya, Sean Perrone, Samantha and Clint Hubbard, Dan Sanford, and those who are celebrating birthdays and anniversaries, especially Steve and Lisa Adams, Colin and Deb Carmen, Mo Deering, Joe Deering, Mo and Joe Deering, Terry and Elizabeth Femmeler, Ken Markham, Evie Triplett. Almighty God, we thank you for gracing our church community with abundant blessings of love, care, and understanding. As we journey through this capital campaign, 
Open our hearts and minds to listen to you and each other to discern your will. Guide our decisions as we move forward to renew and grow our church for your work. All this we ask through you, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Let us pray in the words that our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who, who art, art in heaven, heaven hallowed, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Let's go forth in the name of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. Thanks be to God. Alleluia, alleluia. <laughs>